Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I want to show you how to make Bonnie's Wandering Cabled Poncho. This uses my unique cabling system which I believe is easy to use. However, it is an intermediate level design so you just need to keep that in mind if you're an absolute beginner. Definitely take a look at this but just know that there is a learning curve as you learn how to work these cables. Mistakes are allowed. It's okay to make mistakes. That's the best way we learn through these kind of techniques. But anyway, so much about that. Let's go ahead and I wanna show you what I use for this project. And let's go ahead and get started. For this project, I'm going to be using Cascade Yarns Pure Alpaca, which is 100% baby alpaca. And let's look at the stats. This is a medium weight or number four, but I will say up front that it is a thinner number four weight yarn. So do keep that in mind when if you are substituting another yarn and do be sure to check your gauge because your gauge may vary because this is a slightly thinner um, worsted weight yarn. Each of these hanks has 100 grams, 3.5 ounces, or 220 yards to, or 200 meters of yarn. And the number of hanks that I'll be using will be right across the bottom of your screen. It will also be in the video description, so go ahead and check there if you're looking for specific yardage. I'll also be using a size I or 9 or 5.50 millimeter crochet hook and I recommend that you have a yarn needle and a pair of sharp scissors handy. Now just a word regarding the crochet hook, be sure to check the pattern so that you can check to see that you are getting gauge, especially if you are going to be substituting another yarn. To begin, we're going to work a slip knot and we're going to work a starting chain of 80 chains. Working those 80 chains, we're going to start our first row by working a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each stitch across. After working these all the way across, this is what you should have. And don't worry if it's a little bit curly at the end. That should come out on the next row or two. So go ahead and turn. And we're going to chain two. And now this is the very important foundation row that we're going to set for all of these stitches in the panels. And just, just to let you know, you're going to need to make two of these panels. Um, in order to put the poncho together. All right, so we're gonna start in the very first stitch. We're gonna work a single crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet worked in the same space. And that is called a waddle stitch. And so it's those three stitches, single crochet, chain one, double crochet worked in the stitch. And when you're working this on the foundation row, you're gonna skip the next two stitches for this design and then do it again. Single crochet, chain one, double crochet. Okay, skip two more stitches, one, two. And then that will be allotting for the waddle stitch. Now we're gonna skip two additional stitches, one, two, and we're gonna begin the foundation for the small honeycomb. And we're gonna do this a little bit differently than in some of my other designs. We're gonna use front post double Crochet. So again, just to review, we'll skip two for the waddle stitch, skip two more for the start of the honeycomb. And I've wrapped my hook one time because I'm going to work a front post double crochet, not a treble, but a front post double crochet. 
and then we're going to do that in the next stitch as well. Now I'm going to start right off the bat and tell you that this is the next step is going to probably be one of the more difficult ones of the entire um, pattern. Once we get past this row, it does get much easier. Okay, so we're going to wrap our hook and we're going to now front post uh, double. I was going to say treble, front post double crochet in the two stitches here that we skipped. And we're going to work them behind these two stitches. And the way we do this is we come back into the hole. We're going to identify the stitch by touching it with our thumb and um, toe man finger there. And then we're going to, once we've identified it, we're going to work a front post double crochet in that stitch. And in the one beside it, again, we come into the hole behind here and then find that next stitch. And it, you do have to be very careful, there we go, to have it wrapped around the correct space. Okay, now we're going to skip the next two stitches. One, two, and we're going to work two more front post double crochets. Well, look at there, I, I wrapped for a treble. Be careful not to do what I just did there. So skip the next two stitches. Only have the hook wrapped once this time. I've done it so many times using trebles, it was just an automatic default. So if you've worked a lot of my patterns, just be aware of that, that that could happen. Okay, and then we also work a front post double in the next stitch as well. Now working in front of those last two stitches, we're gonna front post treble in these two stitches. So working in front is definitely much easier than working in back. And then once we do that, Let's pause. You're going to have this big V right here. And that's the bottom or the foundation of the honeycomb. The next stitch we're going to work, uh, make sure we have the correct stitch, which is right here. We're going to work a waddle stitch again, but just one. Single crochet, chain one, double crochet in that same space, skip two, one, two for that waddle stitch. And then now we're gonna work foundations for the large cables. And the way we do that is we work a front post double crochet in the next three stitches. And then a half double crochet in that next stitch. And that half double crochet is worked into the top loops. These are going to be spacers. Um, and you'll see what I mean by that once we get started. They're going to be very important for these cables. Helps to give them definition. We're going to do that two more times. Where we work three front post double crochets, one in each of the next three stitches. Half double in that next stitch, again, worked into the top loops, and then three more front post double crochets, half double in that next stitch. And when you're working that half double, make sure that you're not skipping any more than you need to, okay? So let's take a look at what we have. So we have one set, two set, three sets, and then for the last set, we're just going to work three front post double crochets. Okay, so it should look like that. Now we're going to work another waddle stitch in that next stitch. Skip two stitches, one, two for the waddle stitch. Now we're going to work a honeycomb again. Skip the next two as well. And then we're going to repeat what we did at the very beginning. Two front post double crochets. After we do that, working behind these two stitches, we're going to front post double in these two stitches. 
first the one that's furthest away. And then the next one, again, coming in behind those other two stitches that we just made. And do make sure that you're working front post doubles, not trebles. Skip the next two stitches, one, two, and then front post double. And the next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches, front post double, and the two stitches that we just skipped. Again, let's stop and take a look at what we have. We are almost to the halfway point. So now the next stitch, we're gonna work another waddle stitch, and that is spelled W-A-T-T-L-E. Um, it's not like waddle like a duck, but it's wattle with a T. Okay, skip the next two stitches for that waddle stitch, and now we're gonna work another foundation for the large cable, which will be three front post double crochets, followed by a half double crochet. And we will do that two more times. I'm gonna go ahead and do these next two repeats off camera. So I've repeated this three front post doubles, half double, a total of three times. And then the last section or repeat of this, we just work the three front post double crochets. And again, a waddle stitch, the next stitch, single crochet, chain one, double crochet, that's the waddle stitch. And then skip two more, and then skip two more again, one, two, for the honeycomb. So this will be the last honeycomb. Make sure we get through all the strands. And then working behind those two front post double crochets. Let's go ahead and front post in those last two that we just skipped. Let me see if I can. There we go. And the next stitch is right here. And you can see the V on top. And we're just going to work our hook around that for that post stitch. I know it's a little bit more challenging with the single crochets, but it is doable. Okay, skip the next two stitches. Front post double. And the next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches this time, we front post double. And the two that we skipped. And now all we have left of the row are two waddle stitches. So these are gonna be symmetrical to what we did at the beginning. So waddle stitch in that next stitch. And skip two, and then that last waddle stitch. Skip two stitches, and in the last stitch, we work a single crochet. So let's take a look. We have the waddle stitches, um, foundation for the honeycomb, waddle stitch, foundation for the large cable we're going to be working, waddle stitch, honeycomb, waddle stitch, foundation for that other large cable, waddle stitch, foundation for honeycomb, and then two waddle stitches at the beginning. We are going to turn and we are going to have our back side facing. So just for the record, going forward, the even number rows will have the front side facing. The odd number rows will have the back side facing. Now and throughout. Chain 
two. Now, when we're working in the waddle stitches, we are only going to work in the chain one space that you see. So we're going to skip any stitches prior to these when we are working from the edge and we're going to go right to the chain one space of the waddle stitch and work another waddle stitch. Single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And let's go to the next one. These are the only parts that you're going to work in when you work over the waddle stitch for the following rows. That is until we are working um, the final um, perimeter round, which will be a little ways off for now. Okay, now we're working with the back side facing us from the honeycomb. We're going to work eight back post double crochets in order as those stitches appear. And again, use the nerve endings in your finger and thumb to help you find all of these stitches. Make sure that you work eight back post double crochets over each of the honeycomb stitches. If you don't, you will need to do some ripping out, and we know how ripping out is hard to do, right? So uh, make sure that you count as you go, if that's helpful to you, or just stop periodically and do a quick visual check. Okay, so I just completed eight stitches, and let's just take a, a flip to the front and see how that looks, see how that is helping to further define these honeycombs. And you'll see this as we work the next few rows of the project. Okay, so now we've come to another waddle stitch and just working in that chain one space, work another waddle stitch. Now we're working on the back side of the large cable and we're just going to work three back post double crochets over those post stitches and then half double in the next space and do that repetitively here three more back post double crochets half double in that next stitch and again three back post double crochets and a half double crochet worked in the top loops and then lastly for this cable portion three more back post double crochets Now working in the next waddle stitch, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And now what we're going to be doing is, is going to be repeating what I just showed you. We're working across with the backside facing of the honeycomb stitch. So we just work eight back post double crochets. I'm trying to be as detailed as I can with these foundation rows, but please don't worry, I'm not going to be as detailed with all of these rows. I possibly could, but then I think I would maybe find the total cure for insomnia <laughs> for somebody somewhere, and uh, I'm not terribly interested in doing that. Um, more interested in crochet, so for those of you who are new to my channel, um, what I generally like to do is give detailed instructions at first and then I taper that off as we um, get to repetition of what we're already doing. Okay, so I've gotten eight back post double crochets. We come to another waddle stitch, working only in that chain one space, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And again, we come to the back side of the large cable. So I'm going to just tell you what I'm going to do here. Three back post, double crochets, half double, three back post, half double, etc. So I'll go ahead and work that and then I'll show you the rest. So after working that series of back post, double crochets and half doubles across that next foundation, 
we come to another waddle stitch or another waddle stitch in that chain one space and then once again we have eight back post double crochets on our last honeycomb so I'll go ahead and work these after those last eight back post double crochets over that honeycomb we have two waddle stitches so let's go ahead and work work these again worked only in the chain one space of the waddle stitch and now we have a, a, a chain two which is right here you may have to kind of hunt for it and just make a single crochet in that chain two turning chain and let's go ahead and turn and see what we have you can see now that these columns are much more defined I hope you're enjoying this alpaca as much as I am this is actually one of my all-time favorite yarns especially for garments um, such as ponchos okay now we're ready to move on to row number four chain two and these rows are going to end and start in the same way with those two waddle stitches once we do that it's time for us now to close the top of the honeycomb and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that we're going to skip the next two stitches front post double in the next two stitches working in front of those last two stitches which is different than what we did before okay it's actually it's the opposite of what we did down here on row two so we work in front now and we front post treble in those two skipped stitches skip two more front post double if I said treble I meant double front post double and those next two working behind those two stitches we're going to come in and we're going to front post double over the two stitches that we skipped this one and then this one and I think you're going to find this is much easier than working around that single crochet and then the next stitch which is right here that is a bit awkward at first but once you do it a few times you do get used to it okay so this is how the honeycomb you can see it coming together it will be further defined after the next row waddle stitch in that next chain one space okay now this is the fun part this is where we begin crossing the large cable or the columns that make up the large cable we're going to skip the first three stitches that are the post stitches half double crochet in top of that next half double now we're going to use front post treble to cross the large cables but again the large cables only not the small one so front post treble in each of the next three stitches working in front of the last four stitches the four stitches being these three and the half double we're going to front post treble in each of the three stitches that we just skipped okay after we do that we work a half double in that top of the half double and then we're going to do it all again skip the next three half double in that next stitch front post treble in the next three stitches working in front of the last four stitches we're going to front post treble in the three stitches that we skipped a 
Okay, so the two, let's stop and take a look at that. The two, or the large cable has been crossed, and we call this a front cross, okay, because that second part that you cross is crossed in the front. And when we get to the back cross, the difference is you're gonna work behind those last four stitches, and that will be a back cross. But this is the what this is how a front cross will look in this design. After that, we work a waddle stitch in that chain one of last row's waddle stitch. And we come again to the honeycomb. Skip the next two. Front post double crochet in the next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches. Uh, I can find the stitch. There we go. It's actually the softness of this yarn can be a little bit slippery on the hands, which is actually very nice. It's a lot better than rough yarn, but um, you do have to be careful with it. Skip the next two stitches, front post double in the next two stitches, working behind these two stitches. We're going to front post double in the two stitches that we just skipped. There is a lot of redundancy early on here. The next stitch, we work a waddle stitch. And then we're gonna do it all over again with the crossing of these cables. So let's go ahead. I'm going to explain it again because this may be the first time some of you have seen this particular style of crossing the cables. And this is the style that I have come up with um, and used in a lot of my designs. Skip the first three stitches, half double in the next stitch, front post treble in each of the next three stitches. Okay, working in front of those last four stitches, we front post treble in the three stitches that we skipped. half double and that next half double and again whenever you work a half double it's worked in the top loops not as a post stitch skip the next three stitches since we're going to do this all over again half double that next stitch front post treble in each of the next three stitches Working in front of those last four stitches, we front post treble in the three stitches that we just skipped. And then we get back to the waddle stitch. And since I've already crossed these cables on the honeycomb, um, I'll go ahead and start this, but I will just talk you through this. Skip the next two. This is the third one we've done. Front post double crochet in the next two. And then we're going to front post double working in front of these two stitches in these two. Skip two, front post double, and then working behind those stitches, we front post double in the two skip stitches. So go ahead and work that. And once we complete that honeycomb in the same manner, we work the waddle stitches in the last two chain one spaces. And then we're going to single crochet in the chain two space. Right like that. Let's go ahead and take a look. So this is what you should have after completing four rows. Now on to row number five, we turn. We're going to be turning at the end of each row. Chain two, and we start, just like I said, with those two waddle stitches now and throughout. Okay. 
and once again we come to the back side of the honeycomb we work eight back post double crochets so go ahead and work eight back post double crochets across the back of that after those eight back post double crochets we work a waddle stitch in the chain one space again okay now we have something new we are working on the back side of the cable after the cables have been crossed so what we're going to do is we're going to work back post double crochets. Remember, we only use trebles for the crossing of the cables, and that'll be done with the front side facing. Okay, so we work three back post doubles. Now there's no place to put that half double, so we're going to put it in between that last stitch and the next stitch. It's just the section of this where the cables were crossed. So in the center, work a half double crochet in between those two stitches. And then three more back post double crochets. Now we did add an additional stitch in here, that half double. So to zero out our stitch count differences, or, or in other words, to keep our stitch count consistent, we're going to skip this half double crochet. And then we're going to work in the next half double crochet just like that and we're going to do this again back post double crochet in the next three stitches this is the um, other side of this large crossed cable and in the place where the cable was crossed work another half double crochet in between that last stitch and the next stitch and then three more back post double crochets and then we're going to also again skip this half double and then go right to working the waddle stitch in that next chain one space and then we have repeats again we're going to repeat what we did here with the eight back post double crochets the waddle stitch and then working across the back. I will show this to you one more time once I finish working these eight back post double crochets. After working those eight back post double crochets over the honeycomb, we work another waddle stitch in that chain one space. And then now we're working over the back of the large cable again. And I'll just do this with you again, just, just so that there is total clarity three back post double crochets and between that last stitch and next stitch which is the center of the cable work a half double crochet and then three more back post double crochets skip the next half double and then half double in the next half double and then we do it again three back post double crochets and working in between the last stitch and the next stitch half double at the center of that cable and then three more back post double crochets and then we skip this half double just for the record waddle stitch the next space and then I'm going to talk you through the rest eight back post double crochets over this honeycomb waddle stitch waddle stitch and then a single crochet in the last or in the turning chain. So this is what you should have after five completed rows. All right, now we are on to row six. We've chained two, 
and we're working waddle stitches in those first two stitches. Now we are going to work over the honeycomb and I'm just going to show this to you once because you've seen this before and um, we're going to do the same thing that we did on row two. Skip the next two stitches, front post double in the next two Working behind those last two stitches, we front post double in the two stitches that we just skipped. And then we skip the next two stitches, front post double in the next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches, we front post double in the two stitches that we skip. So let's go ahead and pause and look at that. So you see how this is going to go out, up, in, up, out, and then you know just continue up, in. It's just going to outline like a honeycomb. In the next stitch, in the next chain one space, we work a waddle stitch. And now we are going to cross the cables again, but in a very different way. Let me explain this before I actually do it. This column right here is going to continue to go upward. This column and this column are going to cross in a front cross again. And then this column is going to go upward. So what in the world does that mean? Well, let me show you. When we're just growing the columns, that aren't crossing, we just work front post um, double crochets. And we'll do that in those next three stitches. And then half double in the next half double. And you can see how the half doubles help to further define these cables. Skip the next three stitches. This is where we're getting ready for our front cross. Half double in the next stitch. Whoops, that's right treble, get ready for a front post treble in the next three stitches. Working in front of those last four stitches, we're going to front post treble in the three that we just skipped. So we're crossing the two middle columns with a front cross. And then we half double in that next half double crochet. And then on the other side, we're going to mirror image what we did before. We're going to work three front post double crochet. So if we're just growing these columns, it's either a front post double or a back post double, depending on which side is facing us. But whenever we cross the cables, be sure to use front post treble. I sometimes do make mistakes verbally, so what I, whenever I do that, if there's any question about that, and we do edit these and try to make them as perfect as possible, it is still hard to escape being human at times, even with editors. So I'm just telling you now that if you see me working a treble, it is a treble. If you see me working a front post double, it is a front post double, just to um, clear up any uh, anything that you might see. All right, so we're going to work a waddle stitch in that next stitch. And then we're back to repeating what we've been doing. We're going to cross the um, cables again for the honeycomb, which again, skip two front post double crochets for the smaller cable. Let's go ahead and pull that on through. And then working behind we're going to front post double in those two stitches that we just skipped. Skip the next two front post double in the next two stitches, working in front of those stitches, front post double crochet. 
and again a waddle stitch and I'm going to work the next cable with you again because it is still early in the design but just to let you know that we're getting close to where I will work half of this and then turn you loose to do the other half and if and if you still need more clarity you can always just back up the video a little bit okay so again three front post double crochets this is um, the other large cable half double in that next stitch so now we're getting ready to cross these two columns we work a half double crochet in the next half double crochet and then we get ready for the cross crossing of these cables this is a front cross with trebles front post trebles in each of the next three stitches working in front of those last four stitches we front post treble in the three stitches that we just skipped all right then we half double in the next half double and then front post double in the next three stitches and again let's stop do a quick a quick visual check does that look like this one it sure does so now I'm gonna just have you finish with another waddle stitch we're gonna do another honeycomb just the way I've shown you twice already and then two more waddle stitches and a single crochet in the turning chain now I've turned and we're ready to begin row seven. You should have the back side facing you for this row. Chain two. Let's work those first two waddle stitches. After we've done that, you've seen this before. We're going to work eight back post double crochets across the honeycombs after those eight back post double crochets we work the waddle stitch in the chain one space again and I'll show you what to do when you come to the large cable we're going to work the back post double crochets so three back post double crochets and half double in the half double. This should start looking very familiar to you at this point. Now we've only crossed the cable, only one of the cables or one set of the columns. So we're gonna do back post double crochets, three of those. And in between the last stitch and the next stitch, we put that half double right in the center and then three more back post double crochets. Now um, working the, the row after cables have been crossed is pretty much going to be the same whether it's front cross or back cross and you'll understand that in a bit. But we always make sure that we work that half double in between where the cables were crossed and then we always skip the first half double after that after we work those three back post doubles. Half double in that next half double and then three more back post double crochets. And that is pretty much what you need to do when working the row number seven. So let me just lead you through this quickly. A waddle stitch. We should have eight back post double crochets, waddle stitch. And again, you do what I just did here with the three back post doubles, half double, the three back post, that half double in between where the cables were crossed, three more back posts, skip this half double, half double here, and then three more back post doubles, waddle stitch, and then eight more back post doubles across the honeycomb, waddle stitch, waddle stitch, and a single crochet 
in the turning chain. So go ahead and finish row number seven. For row number eight, we're going to start with the chain two, those two waddle stitches. And this should look very familiar when we work this row. Now we are going to close the top of the honeycomb just like we did a couple of rows down. We're going to skip the next two stitches, front post double crochet in the next two stitches, working in front of those two stitches. We're going to front post double crochet in those two skipped stitches. Skip two more, front post double crochet in those two stitches, and again all three of the honeycombs in this row are worked the same way. Working behind these two stitches, we are going to front post double crochet in those two stitches that we just skipped. Again, as a reminder, use the nerve endings in your Thumpkin and Tall Man to find where those stitches are. They really do make it easy. After finishing that honeycomb, we're going to work in the waddle stitch again. With that waddle stitch, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And now we're not going to cross any of the cables on the large cable. So we are simply going to go back to what we started with on row number two, actually. It's going to be three front post double crochets, followed by a half double crochet. We're going to do that three times going across. And I think this is the row you can gain an appreciation of how these half double crochets space out or help to uh, enhance the cable. So we worked a half double crochet and then again three front post doubles followed by that half double crochet and then the last column just three front post double crochets. And then again a waddle stitch and then we repeat what I just showed you again with the honeycomb crossing it closing up the top like we did down here waddle stitch and then again only front post doubles over the um, over the post stitches and make sure that you get those half doubles in between okay and then another waddle stitch, another honeycomb, waddle stitch, waddle stitch, and single crochet at the end of the row. So go ahead and finish row number eight. This is what you should have after completing eight rows. All right, now we are going to turn. We have our back side facing us now. And we're going to start row nine with the chain two. And this is actually a repeat of row number three. So we work those waddle stitches in those first two stitches, first two chain one spaces that is. And again, we're working those eight back post double crochets across the back side of each of the honeycomb stitches in this row. And let me give you a quick review of what else we need to do because it is a row that we have already worked. After those eight back post doubles, we're going to work a waddle stitch in the chain one space. And then working across the large cable, it's very easy. Three back post doubles, half double, three back post doubles, half double, three back post doubles, half double, three back post doubles. Quite a rhythm there. Again, waddle stitch, and then we're back to the eight back post doubles over the honeycomb. And then that repeats 
again with the wattle stitch and the back post double crochets and half doubles over the next large cable wattle stitch eight back post doubles over the honeycomb wattle stitch wattle stitch and a single crochet in the chain one space so go or chain two space rather so go ahead and complete row number nine this is what you should have after completing nine rows and you can see now the pattern of the honeycomb is well established and we're just going to continue this in this visual way until the panel is completed okay and you may want to even give it a quick visual check before going forward at the end of each row just in case you may have miscrossed anything you can go ahead and correct it now instead of perhaps 10 rows later and have to tear out your good work. All right, so now we're on to row number 10, which is the same as row number six. Okay, let's look at row number six. That's the row where we crossed, let me hold it better for you, where we crossed this cable only, which is the, the one in the middle of, of the columns. Everything else we have done many times. So. We, when we get to this large cable, we're going to do a front cross right here. And that is really the only new thing that we're going to be doing on this particular row. And we've already done it back here on row six. So let's go ahead and get started. Start with a chain two. And we're going to work the waddle stitches in those chain one spaces. Yes, we have a lot of redundancy built in but that's how we learn okay so now we get to the honeycomb and again I'm gonna just work this skip two I'll work it the first time for you front post double crochet in those next stitches and we work behind those two stitches and we work front post doubles in the two stitches that we just skipped and then I'll work the other side for you just so that we are totally clear skip the next two front post double in the two that we just skipped and this is the easy side we work in front of those two stitches and front post double in the two skipped stitches and waddle stitch in that next stitch in the chain one space. And now we get to the large cable and I'll do this for you one time. We're going to front post double crochet in each of these first three stitches. Half double in that half double crochet and then now it's time to cross this skip the next three stitches half double in that next stitch front post treble we wrap the hook twice for three treble crochets that's two and three Working in front of those last four stitches, we front post treble in the three stitches that we just skipped. Should we get through all the strands? And half double in that next stitch. And after that, we front post double in the next three stitches. Let's pull up the loop and let's take a look. Now we actually have what looks like a more traditional cable. So this is what you do when you come to the large cable section and you know what to do. For the rest of this row, we have a waddle stitch. You're gonna repeat what I showed you here on the honeycomb bottle stitch we're going to cross this cable again with the front cross just like we did here 
and then um, wattle stitch, another honeycomb, wattle stitch, wattle stitch, and a single crochet in the chain one space at the end of the row. So go ahead and finish row number 10. This is what you should have after 10 rows completed. We are getting close to halfway through the repeat that we're going to be working for these panels. Now we're going to go on to row number 11. This is with the back side facing and this is actually a repeat of row 7. We're going to chain 2. We're going to work those wattle stitches and then we're going to work those eight back post double crochets. I'm going to go ahead and work these. After we work those eight back post double crochets, we work the next wattle stitch. And then now we're working with the back side of the large cable. And you've seen this before, but I'm going to go ahead and work this for clarity. Three back post double crochets. I just want to show you that it looks um, the same as what we did in row number seven. Half double and then half double. And then we're just working the back side of that crossed cable three back post double crochet and for the record we will not be crossing any cables with the back side facing ever in this design so if you are trying to find yourself crossing cables with the back side facing something is not right okay work that half double in the center where those cables cross in between that first and last stitch and back post double crochets in the next three stitches skip this half double work a half double in the next half double and then three back post double crochets and that is pretty much the repeat so let's just talk it through waddle stitch eight back post double crochets waddle stitch and then repeat what you just saw behind this other large cable and again don't forget the half double crochet in between that last stitch and next stitch and waddle stitch eight back post double crochets waddle stitch waddle stitch and a single crochet in the turning chain this is what you should have after completing 11 rows now we're going to work row number 12 and it's actually going to be a repeat of row number four, which is the row we worked down here. And the main feature about this row is we have two front crosses right up here. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and verbally, I'm just going to start you. We're going to chain two, two wattle stitches when we work the honeycomb cable we're going to close up the top so we'll work two front post doubles and then working in front of those two we work these two stitches skip two two front post doubles and working behind those stitches we work the two front post doubles and go ahead and work the waddle stitch and then I will work this section with you now that I've come to the large cable we're going to start crossing these cables. Skip the next three stitches, half double in the next stitch, front post treble in each of the next three stitches, Now working in front of those last four stitches, we're going to front post treble. Let me go ahead and try that again. There we go. In those three stitches that we just skipped. Half double in that next half double. And then we're going to do it again. 
skip the next three stitches, half double, and that next half double, and then three front post treble crochets in those next three stitches. Working in front of those last four stitches, front post treble, and the three stitches that we just skipped. And then half, I'm sorry, waddle stitch in that next space. And let me go ahead and stop. Let's take a look. So this is what the cable, the large cable, should look like. You have a cross here, front cross, and a front cross here. So go ahead and work that across the way. You know what to do with the, the honeycomb now. Again, we're closing it up at the top, just like we did there. And then repeat the same with the waddle stitches and the large cable. And again, two waddle stitches at the end and a single crochet in that turning chain. So go ahead and finish out row number 12. This is what you should have after 12 rows with these two cables crossed here and these two. And again, these honeycomb cables are just going to maintain as well as all the, um, the waddle stitches. They're just gonna continue doing the same thing. The only thing that's gonna be different each row or on the rows um, that going forward is something might be happening here that's a little bit different on the large cable so I'm going to focus on that going forward all right so now we're going to turn and um, for row number 13 it's actually a repeat of row number five and let's just talk through this one chain two waddle stitch waddle stitch we're going to work those eight back post double crochets waddle stitches and we're going to work the back post double crochets and the half doubles, but don't forget to put the half doubles in between where the cable crosses and to skip the first half double and work in the half double. And again, the back post double crochets as you go and the waddle stitches and back post double crochets over the honeycombs. So go ahead and work row 13. Don't forget single crochet at the end of the row. For row 14, I'm going to show you a back cross. I've gone ahead and started the row with the chain two, those two waddle stitches, and the honeycomb and a waddle stitch. Okay, for this large cable, we're going to work three front post double crochets, half double in the half double. And now let me demonstrate for you a back cross. And this is the only time you're gonna use this in the uh, pattern when you repeat this row. We're gonna skip the next three stitches, half double in the next stitch, front post treble in the next three stitches, So now after working those four stitches, we're going to front post treble in the three stitches, but working behind those four stitches. So we're going to come into the back door and locate that first stitch. It may help to put your thumb up in that little opening there so that you can better complete these stitches. So I'm coming in the back and I'm going to work this next stitch right here. And coming into that same hole again, the third stitch right there. And that is a back cross. After that, we work a half double crochet in that next stitch and three front post double crochets. So let me just show you how this looks. So whenever you have a back cross, the, um, the first stitches that you worked are going to be in front. Whereas on a front cross, 
It's the second group of stitches that you work. So, or another way to remember it, the front crosses will go this way, the back cross will go that way. And the only difference is you come into that hole and work those three front post treble crochets behind these four stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and work to the next cable and I'll give you one more view of this before sending you on with the larger assignment. I wanna show you that back cross one more time. And again, I worked the three front post doubles and a half double, and we're gonna skip the next three stitches, half double, that next half double, front post trebles, and each of the next three stitches. Now this is where it's different, working in back of those last four stitches, we come into the hole, which is right here, and then we work one, two, three front post trebles. And it does help for me to stick my thumb up there into that hole as I'm um, finding these stitches. Here's the second one. Again, using the nerve endings and the tall man and thumpkin. And then the third stitch, which is right here. I hope you're able to see this. All right, and then I'm going to complete the rest of this cable with a half double crochet and the three front post double crochets. Let's stop and take a look at these. Okay, so do make sure that these are going in the opposite direction. So go ahead and finish out this row. And again, waddle stitch, waddle stitch, and a single crochet in the turning chain. For row number 15, we are going to chain two, waddle stitch, waddle stitch. Again, eight back post double crochets over the honeycomb, waddle stitch. And then working across the large cable, we will do three back post doubles, half double. And then this is where we work three back post doubles. And then we're going to work a half double in between that first and last stitch. It's the center of the cable. It may look a little bit different because they're crossed as a back cross, but we do the same thing. And then three more back post doubles, half double, three back post doubles. And then we're on to the waddle stitch and the eight back post doubles, What we've just like we've been doing all along. And at the end of the row, waddle stitch, waddle stitch, and a single crochet in the chain to turning space. So go ahead and work row number 15. And for the record, this is a repeat of row number seven. Now this is what you should have after completing 15 rows. I'll give you a clearer view of this. Now we have the pattern established. So now what I want you to do is look across the bottom of the screen and I'll put the row numbers and how many repeats. We're going to be repeating rows four through 15. Row four begins down here with the two front crosses and we're gonna do that again right up here. We're gonna cross these two and these two. And I'll go ahead and show you how to do that as a demonstration. But if you don't need to watch that, go ahead and work rows four through 15 in a repeat, the number of times, like I said, that was across the screen. And if you need additional stitch support for how to follow along, look across again, and there'll be a time mark for you where row four begins. And you can just watch that as many times as you need. So again, just wanted to show you what it looks like to cross these cables at this point in the pattern, because it looks just a slight, slightly different than it did before. Skip those three stitches, half double, in that next stitch, front post treble, in the next three stitches, and after that we're back to front crosses, cross in front of those four stitches. Again, this is a repeat of row number four, which is going to front post treble in those three stitches that we skipped. And 
I'll do that for you again. I just want to give you a clear view of what it will look like at this part in the pattern. A half double, that next stitch. And then again, skip the next three stitches. Half double, that next stitch. Front post, treble crochet in the next three stitches. And then working in front of those last four, front post treble in the three stitches that we just skipped. And let's go ahead and work a waddle stitch. And I want to give you a good view of what this looks like. Okay, so we have an idea of what this cable is going to look like. So with these two cross cables here, you're basically starting what you did here. And if you need to know what to do, you can look at the pattern, watch the video, or you can even look further down in your work to get a clue as to what the next thing that is happening with this large cable. And again, like I said before, the honeycombs will just continue in this manner. And of course the waddle stitches, you should know what to do with them at that point. Okay, so go ahead and work the rest of this and I will show you the, the last row. I'm gonna go over these row repeats with you one more time. We are going to be repeating rows four, which is where these two cables crossed. Okay, rows four all the way through row 15, which is the row that comes after the back cross here. It's the row that comes after that. Okay, so we're going to repeat that a total of six times. Okay, so if you're looking at the big cable in the middle here, you should have a total of seven of these followed by the section here. Um, once you're done. So you're going to repeat this a total of six times. Again, that will yield seven repeats. And then after you do that, we're going to repeat rows four, which is the double cross again, four through rows eight. One more time. Okay, I have now worked a total of 92 rows. I just worked the rows 15 through 92, which was the six repeats of rows four through 15, and then repeated rows four through eight once more. And let's take a look. It's gonna be hard to get the whole thing in, but I'll show you a better picture of this in a bit. But I'm really, really loving the um, stitch definition that I'm getting with this yarn, even though it's softer yarn. Softer yarns, by the way, um, tend to yield a little bit less stitch definition um, than stiffer, uh, firmer yarns. But still, with this, I uh, love this alpaca. I love the way this is going to feel. Now we're ready to work the perimeter round. We're going to work single crochets all the way around the perimeter of the um, rectangle. We're going to do this to both of them. And it's very important that you have the numbers exact as we do this. And that's because this is going to determine how the poncho aligns itself, how these um, two rectangles are going to align to form our poncho. So you still should have the front side facing, and we're going to turn 90 degrees to work along the row ends. I'm going to chain one. And so now what we are going to do is we are going to work three stitches for every two rows across. So the way I'm going to do this I'm just going to start here. We're going to work two single crochets in that first row end and then one in the next. So as I'm going along this side, the, the left side, if you're watching the right-handed version, I'm going to work two single crochets over that single crochet at the row end and then one single crochet in that chain one space. So we're going to do that all the way until we get to the next corner. 
And by the time you get to the next corner with this repeat, you should have 138 stitches along the edge. So go ahead and work those stitches all the way across till you get to the next corner. So now we've come to the corner I have chained two to help form the corner. And we're going to now work along the foundation edge. Now as we work along the original foundation chain, we are going to be covering up what remains. But we're going to also use a couple of stipulations as we work across. We are going to work two single crochets for every waddle stitch. Okay, now before we do that, there was an end stitch, so let's go ahead and we're going to work a single crochet for that end stitch. And then now working along the, um, again, opposite where the waddle stitches appear, we're going to work a single crochet in that next stitch, skip a stitch, and then a single crochet in the next. We're going to do that again single crochet in the next stitch, skip a stitch, and then single crochet in the next. And now the next eight stitches are going to be opposite of the honeycomb. So we're just going to go ahead and work single crochets in each of the next eight stitches. So we'll go ahead and work eight single crochets Again, over that foundation where the honeycomb was worked. And then after that, in the established pattern, there was one waddle stitch. So we're going to work a single crochet, skip the next stitch, and then a single crochet in that next stitch. Again, omitting one single crochet along the foundation row for each waddle stitch. So we're going from th really three stitches to two stitches there. And this again is just to keep the ratio of the edgings to the side, you know, the ends of the poncho to the sides appropriate. Okay, so now we're going to work across the large cabling. And as we do that, we're going to skip the foundation stitch where the half double crochet was work. So I'll go ahead and work this with you. We work three single crochets where the post stitches were worked. We're going to skip a stitch for that half double. And then we're going to work three more single crochets, one for each of the next post stitches. And again, skip a stitch for the half double. And then three more single crochets for those posts opposite the post stitches, skip the next for that half double, and then one in each of the next three of the post stitches. And this is how we are going to work across the foundation um, side of the rectangle. So let me go ahead and do a little bit more with you again. So again, we come to a waddle stitch. So we're going to work single crochet, skip a stitch, and then a single crochet in that next stitch. Again, this is just going to help take away some of the waviness out of that foundation row. Okay, so now we come to the waddles, I'm sorry, the um, honeycomb stitch again, and we're gonna work eight single crochets for these stitches. seven and eight if I can find the appropriate space there we go and now again we come to a, another waddle stitch which is the spacing stitch so we work a single crochet skip a stitch and single crochet and that next stitch and I'll go ahead and work this again um, for the large cable again just being mindful to skip the half double crochets. So we have those three single crochets for those post opposite those post stitches. Skip one for the half double. Three more. And 
and skip one opposite the half double. Three more for those post stitches. Skip the next stitch for the half double and three more stitches. And once again, we come to the waddle stitch. We work a single crochet, skip a stitch and single crochet and then one in each of the next eight stitches. After we do that, we have the two waddle stitches at the end of this row. Single crochet in that first stitch, skip the next, then single crochet in the next stitch, single crochet in that next stitch, skip a stitch, and single crochet in the last stitch. You have that extra single crochet on the other side where we started just because that's the way the rows were worked. Um, after you work all the way across this foundation side where the foundation chain was, you should have 64 stitches total. Okay, and the same numbers will apply when we do the other end. Okay, so now we're going to turn to work across the other side with the row ends. We're going to chain two, and just like we did along the other side, we are going to work two single crochets in the first row end, and then one in the next. So I'll go ahead and get that started. So we're gonna work two single crochets in the first row end, and then one in the next. Okay, and two in the next row end, and then one in the next. Or you could even work one and then two, one then two. It really doesn't matter as long as you have the proper number of stitches along the side, which again is 138. So go ahead and work those to the next corner. After working those 138 stitches along the row ends, we're gonna turn 90 degrees again, chain two, and now working across those waddle stitches, we're going to work single crochet in that first single crochet and a single crochet in the chain one space. We're going to skip the double crochet. And when you get to the next one, single crochet in the single crochet and single crochet in the chain one space and skipping that double crochet and then working over that honeycomb cable, we're going to work single crochet in each of those eight stitches. And it is a lot easier to see what you're working on as you're working across that last row worked of the pattern stitch. Okay, so those are those eight stitches worked. We come to another waddle stitch and single crochet in the single crochet, single crochet, in that chain one space and skip the double crochet. And then working in the tops of the post stitches for the large cable. Again, this will be easier to see. We work one, two, three single crochets in those post stitches, skip the half double crochet. It's a lot easier to see. Single crochet in each of the next three stitches, skip the half double, single crochet in the next three post stitches, skip the half double, and then again three more single crochets. Again when you finish this side you should also have 64 stitches across. Again coming to that waddle stitch, single crochet in that single crochet, and then in the chain one space, skip the double, and then back to the honeycomb. So go ahead and work the other side in the same manner that I just showed you here. Again, skipping 
the half double crochets and working only two single crochets per each waddle stitch. After working those last four stitches over those waddle stitches, chain two, and we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet of this perimeter round. Go ahead and give it a chain and a tug. And let me find my scissors right here. And I'm going to clip a generous strand. Let's try that again. There we go. And pull that on through. And so now I have my panel, panel ready. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the the second panel is completed and has the perimeter round and then let's show you how to put these two panels together. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I'm going to put these two panels together. Um, you should have the foundation row right at the top and I am going to be using these little tools called knit clips. You can get these um, online. I can put a link in the video description or you could just use pins. These just tend to preserve family unity better because if you step on these it's not as bad as stepping on a pin and I really enjoy these and if you want even you can you can use these to mark um, you know the top. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Mark the top of each panel using one of these clips. So I'm going to take it off in just a minute. Okay, so when you put these panels together, you want to make sure that you have um, the front side facing away from you when you do the stitching. But before we do that, let me show you how you're going to place these panels. Okay, we have the front side facing up here. I'm going to fold this one over about like this. Okay. Let's bring it up a little bit more. It doesn't have to be exact. And then the other panel, I'm going to put it facing down just like this. And let me show you what we're going to do at this point. We're going to start with this end. This is the short end here. And we're going to line up these two chain two corners once we get to stitching. We can find them in a little bit, but I'm just going to line these up and we're going to start in the two chain two corners and then we're going to work lining these stitches up. I can take this one off. Lining these up stitch by stitch and yes, the chain two corners do count as a stitch. And let's just go ahead and line these up. This is just a rough lining so that you know how this poncho is going to look. Okay, so we're going to do that. And I'll show this up close. Okay, so we have it lined up to here. Okay, now you have another section that's quite long here. So we're going to fold this under and fold it down and I'm going to I'm going to flip this entire piece to the other side. This is where we folded this down. There is also a diagram that will help you to understand what I'm doing here. Okay, so and just like we did before the corners, it's very important that you line up the chain two corners first. And once you do that, Everything else should fall into place if these numbers were accurate along the end and along the side. Again, those numbers were determined um, based on the ratio of how these panels go together. It's very important that those numbers be as similar as <laughs> to those numbers as you can get them. If you're just one or two off, it's not going to be a deal breaker, but if it's more than that, it could be a problem. All right, so I'm going to just line these up and I've said this before, start always where you have the two chain two corners when you sew this together. But until we do that, I can give you an idea right here. This is inside out and backwards, of course, but this is what the poncho 
is going to look like. This is the sizing of the poncho. Of course, we haven't worked the collar and we haven't worked the end ribbing yet, but this is how you piece these two panels together. And if you need more help than this, definitely check the written pattern where I have um, a diagram showing how these panels go together. All right, so let me go ahead and show you how to slip stitch this. Now, as I said before, when you slip stitch these together, definitely start where the panels have the two chain two corners. This is very important. Okay, so I'm going to start here and here. And also make sure that you have the front side of the work facing. Let me go ahead and show you that. You know, the nice pretty side is facing inward. Now we're going to start by putting our hook in both of those chain two spaces. I am working with my um, gauge hook. If you find that the slip stitches as you make them are just too tight, feel free to size up to the size hook that will give you a nice even stitch. You don't want it to be you know, pulled particularly tight. All right, so I'm going to bring this through and give it a chain. And I'm going to work slip stitches across, matching each stitch as I go and try not to skip any. And you can see I'm working through both loops, slip stitch. Now, if you prefer to use a whip stitch, which would be using your yarn needle and, and whip stitches where you go around and around and around when you're going into the stitches. You can do that, but I feel like this, this gives it a little more flexibility to use the slip stitch. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and work the slip stitch until I get to the chain the next chain two corner. There's only going to be one on one of the panels, and I'll show that to you once I get there. I wanted to show you the last few slip stitches as I come near the chain two corner, which is right here on the, the shorter edge. And there's is there a stitch there? Okay, that is the chain two corner next. And I just work that like that. And go ahead, give it a chain. And I'm going to go ahead and um, clip a nice generous strand that I can hide in my work later. Okay, I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you this seam. Okay, this is what the, of course, the back side facing. And with the front side facing, this is what this is going to look like. Of course, you can block this, you know, wet block this if you want it to be a little bit flatter before wearing. But quite honestly, the weight of the yarn is going to, to make that flat in no time at all. So let me go ahead on to the next seam. And again... As we're working, okay, here we go. As we're working the next seam, always start, go ahead and bring, always start with those two chain two corners come together and then work inward. All right, so go ahead and finish that second seam and then we will start working on the ribbing for the bottom and the collar. Okay, so now that we have the right side of the poncho facing us. We've turned it right side out and you see the V section. Pick one that's going to be the front. So whichever one we start with, that's going to be the front. It should not matter. They both should look the same. So now I've also gone ahead and I'm changing to one size, um, one size smaller than my gauge hook. I'm going down to a size H or 8 or 5.00 millimeters. And I'm going to join, let me show you, right in the place where that last slip stitch was worked, or it might have been the, 
Yeah, it was the last slip stitch. And I'm gonna go ahead and make another little slip knot and join with a chain two. This does not count as a stitch in this particular section. And we're gonna work a half, I'm sorry, a double crochet in that same space as joining. And go ahead and work a double crochet in each stitch all the way around, but do not join at the end. We're going to work these in rows so that we can have a nice, beautiful um, collar in the front. So go ahead and do that, and I'll show you what to do once you get all the way around the collar. When you get to the other corner on the back side, make sure that you work a stitch in both those chain two spaces, okay? Just like that, just to make sure that those stitches are covered. Well, in this case, there's just one chain two space where that was joined because then you have another stitch alongside there. But don't omit that stitch. Make sure that you definitely work in that space as you go along. So at the end of this row, I have worked my last double crochet in the chain two space. Notice that I'm not going to join this because this collar is going to lay over on itself like this and we're going to stitch it down once we're done. So we're going to chain two. I'm going to turn and we are going to work simple ribbing, which is going to be front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet and we're going to work that uh, all the way across the row. It's really around the neck but it, since I didn't join it's technically not around it is a row. So we're just going to continue to work this back and forth um, repeating row two until we get the collar the size that we wish the collar to be. I'll go ahead and show you um, how many rows I have completed, but if you want your collar larger or smaller, you can just adjust that by working either fewer or additional rows. Just for some clarity as you work these ribbing rows, when you come to the end, of the row which I'm about to here. You want to make sure that when you work your the, the rows that follow, work front post over front post, back post, double crochets over back post. And when you get to the end, make sure you work a half double crochet in that turning chain. And then we turn to work the next row. chain two and again skip that first stitch and working the post stitches front post followed by a back post now this row actually ends with a front post so when you turn the other side and if your row starts with a back post double crochet, by all means start with a back post double crochet. I just wanted to you know, be very clear about that as you work these rows for the collar. And the same thing will apply once we get to the bottom ribbing. After working this all the way across, um, just to let you know that the even rows do end with a front post double crochet. And again, work half double in the end. And I've gone ahead and I've finished a total of eight rows. Seven of these are with the front and back posts. And of course the first row was just with the double crochets um, worked into the single crochet. So I'm gonna go ahead and fasten this off and I'll give you further instruction there we go. And pull that on through. Now I want to show you how to tack the collar down 
And you can do this one of two ways. You can do it this way, or you could decide to cross it the other direction. It's whatever you really prefer to do. I'm actually going to take what is with this facing me. This is this side or the right-handed side. Now, if, as you're wearing it, it would be on the left side. And I'm going to tack it under. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up carefully. Okay, so the collar is about three inches. And so and I've measured off three inches here over these stitch areas. And again, you're going to have to just kind of eyeball this. And okay, so now I have my needle and my yarn that I'm going to use for thread. And so what I am going to do is I'm going to very carefully sew these into these stitches here. So you, there are a number of ways you can do this. You just want to do it in such a way that it will not show. And I'm going to go ahead and split the fibers there. I've tied my little knot in the yarn there. And so I'm just going to carefully line these stitches up. I just want to make sure that it's tacked down carefully. I don't want this to show on the other side, so I'm just going to be very careful that these stitches don't come through the front. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and again, the whip stitch, just going to whip stitch this carefully along that section there where the cell, the single crochets were attached. Okay, so I have completed tacking this side down. And once we've done that, we're going to do the same in the front. And again, we're going to use this edge and we're going to tack it down to where these single crochets are attached. And you want to make sure that you, okay, hold this out carefully and wherever it falls naturally, so you want to attach it there. So I'm going to go ahead and start from the far side. I'm going to go to the back and go ahead and get this connected properly. And then continue again using that whip stitch to connect that collar down carefully. And with the monochromatic color or you know one color of this yarn, the stitching should be should be concealed pretty well within the work. Okay, so I'll go ahead and finish this up. We can probably fast forward the film a little bit faster here, so it's not so boring. So let's get that under.
Okay, and then once we're finished, we're going to go ahead and finish off here. and trim and once we have that connected here is a nice view of that collar now I'm going to show you how to start the ribbing and I'm actually going to start it on the back side uh, of the poncho so that the place that is connected is not going to show it's not going to show that much anyway but that way it'll be on the back side regardless and I'm going to start near the corner because when you get to the two corners and there are only two as you work um, what I'm about to show you with the bottom rivering um, I want you to work the corners the same way so I'm going to start near that corner but not in the corner um, so this way you can start again literally anywhere along the bottom side of the poncho but I, I would prefer that you start it in the back all right so we're going to chain two and just like we did before I'm going to work a double crochet in the same space where the chain two is worked because this does not count as a stitch in this design and as you work the front and back post stitches do not work um, the chain as a stitch so what we're going to do is just like we did for the neck we are going to work one double crochet in each of the single crochets until we get to the chain two corner so once you get to the chain two corner we are going to work 12 stitches in that space. I know it's a lot, but you'll understand once we get working the ribbing because we're not going to be adding any more stitches for the ribbing and this corner needs to last for several rounds. Okay, let's see how many we have here so far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that's eleven, and twelve. That is a lot of stitches there, but don't worry. Even if it's a little ripply right now, don't worry about it. And also, don't forget this very first stitch. It's easy for the other stitches to have covered that one up so go ahead and pull back those other stitches so that you reveal that and see it so go ahead and work this all the way around and let me go ahead and explain what I want you to do so we're going to also work 12 stitches in the other chain two space on, on the front side of the poncho and then once you get to the beginning we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round and you can actually keep the front side facing you do not have to turn at the end of these rounds and so what we are going to do is we're going to work the ribbing starting with the first stitch we're going to work a front post double crochet back post front post back post front post back post etc all the way around and go ahead and repeat round two, which begins the post stitching. You can repeat that all the way around. And again, join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. That's the way all of these will be worked. So I'm working the last stitch before joining. And for the record, 
I have worked a total of five rounds along the bottom ribbon and the first round of course was the double crochets followed by four additional rounds working the front and back post double crochets going to join to that first stitch of the round like we've been doing give it a chain and a tug and I'm going to fasten off So the only thing we need to do now is to hide the loose strands. Let me give you just a very quick demonstration of how you can do this. Uh, this is why I like to use long strands and hide these loose strands on the back side of your work. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it down into the stitches here. And this is a very um, soft and sometimes um, easy to pull out thread. So what I like to do to help with that is to go the opposite, you know, go down one side. Let me go a little bit further, actually, into one stitch and then come back up the opposite side just so that it doesn't pull out too easily. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to give it a little tug back and very carefully trim the strand close, but not so close that it um, affects the stitches. Okay, and let's show you the point there. Well, I hope you enjoyed making Bonnie's Wandering Cable Poncho with me today. If you did, I would love to hear from you. Please feel free to just comment below. God bless. Bye-bye.